What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. In today's video, I'll share with you guys an update on the John Deere 1445 since many of you have been asking for it. If you look closely, the right rear wheel is missing and that's because I found an oil leak in this area. I'm glad I took all of this apart before I installed the engine because it was much easier to get to. In the middle of the screen, you'll see parts that came off of the right side of the rear axle. Basically, all of these parts right here hold the rear wheel in place and they also support it. But now, since this unit has four wheel drive, you'll also have drive shafts going to the rear wheel, which power the rear wheels. Now all these parts right here contribute to that system and it is a very nice option, but when it comes time to repair something, it could be really costly. In my case, all of these parts can be reused and the only parts that I have to replace are basically some lip seals, which are the bigger lip seals in this box, and then some sleeves where the lip seals ride on. I was fortunate enough to find these at John Deere and they had everything in stock and I'm really happy. Uh, there is one more o-ring that I will be replacing and that is for the axle housing itself and then up above we also have the uh, Gasket that goes up against this gear case cover I cleaned this off nicely so I can replace it with a brand new gasket So I'm gonna grab my tools and start with this rear axle repair Let's kick things off by installing a seal sleeve onto this upper control arm It's not just any sleeve. It comes with a rubber coated inner diameter this little addition not only acts as a seal, but also extends the life of the control arm, saving you from the expense of replacing it. Watch closely as I gently tap this sleeve flush against the control arm using an old bearing race. The results? Well, let's just say it's where it should be. Now on to the next step, the rear axle spindle case. We're going to introduce a brand new seal into the mix. But hold on, we're not just going to do this casually. We're using an arbor press to ensure that the seal goes on straight and snug especially since this spindle case is made of lightweight aluminum. With the seal in place, it's time to reunite the spindle and the spindle case. And of course, I'm calling the Arbor Press for some assistance once again. But wait, there's more. Now it's time to install a deep groove ball bearing, the part that supports the spindle within the spindle case. And guess what? It does it very smoothly. To cap off this part of the assembly, I'm sliding the bevel gear onto the spindle spline and securing it with a snap ring. It's like the final piece of a puzzle falling into place. Now let's shift our focus to the gear case assembly. Inside this bore, we'll introduce a new component, the shaft gear. At the end of the shaft, we'll snugly fit a ball bearing, which will support the shaft's rotation within the gear case. There's one more ball bearing making its entrance, and it's taking a spot within the gear case. This bearing will allow the gear case to pivot once fully assembled. With all parts where they should be, it's time for the grand merge. But before that, I'm giving the mating surfaces a good clean with acetone, removing all the oils. Now I'm not saying laying down this gasket from John Deere is a piece of cake, but it's not rocket science either, because it only goes on one way. To ensure a leak-free assembly, I'm applying some aviation form a gasket on both sides. Trust me, this stuff is really good. Now let the merging begin. As this becomes one assembly, I'm rotating the shaft gear for that perfect meshing of the gears. Time to secure the gear case bolts with the right torque, and just like that, the lower part of this repair is in the bag. Now let's turn our attention to the top end of this assembly, where we had the infamous leak. Say goodbye to the old corroded seal sleeve, as it's getting a makeover with a shiny new one. Now I'm adding one more ball bearing into the gear case. This little addition allows the assembly to pivot on the top end. But before the seal goes in, a generous amount of assembly grease to condition the lips. It's all in the details. What I have in my hand is the gear case drop housing. It's the part that holds the gear case and the steering arm onto the rear axle. To make it all work like clockwork, we've got a few more bearings and seals to introduce. Take a look at that shim. It's the key to getting those beveled gears just right. They need that perfect backlash and this shim delivers exactly that. Now remember that beveled gear I placed into the drop housing? Well it's time to slide that onto the top end of the shaft gear. A gentle tap and they're a perfect match. I'm not done yet. One last bearing and shaft seal have to be installed to secure the linkage. With everything in place, I'll make sure those dowel pins align and the shaft seal creates a tight seal around the new seal sleeve. And as a final touch, I'll tighten the whole assembly, bringing this intricate mechanical assembly to a flawless conclusion. So I'm back on the John Deere 1445 and the right side of the rear axle is now fully assembled. All I have to do is merge this with the rear axle itself and tighten five bolts to seal everything off between this part and the rear axle. 
there will be exactly one o-ring this keeps everything sealed and hopefully it doesn't leak because it is a brand new o-ring so let's put this all together and then we'll see what we can do next So I'll give you guys a quick look at the rear axle before I put on the right tire. This is the portion I repaired with brand new seals and sleeves. Everything else was good. So the bearings, gears, shafts, and the cast parts, everything was still uh, in working order so I could reuse everything. Now this part was hooked up to the main portion of the axle and that is this part right here. It is bolted on with four bolts that go into the cast part this way. And then one more bolt that goes in the other way because there wasn't enough room to put in a bolt from this side. Nevertheless, the power comes in from the front transmission, comes backwards into the differential. And this distributes power left to your left wheel and then right to your right wheel. And this is obviously only when your drive mechanism is engaged in four wheel drive. Now the steering mechanism is this right here. This is your steering cylinder. If you choose to go left or right, the cylinder will either go in or out. And that's hooked up to your steering linkage on the left. And that's also hooked up to your right with this tie rod. It goes right there, so you'll have steering on both wheels. This is pretty much like a forklift. You'll have your rear wheels that are steering and your front ones that are driving most of the time unless you engage four-wheel drive. Now I can add brand new oil into the right side of this rear axle. I'll mount the tire and then drop this machine back onto the ground. The John Deere 1445 is once again on all four tires and as you guys can tell the rear axle reseal or the repair that I did in today's video was a success. Now there are a few more things that I have to do on this John Deere 1445 and as you guys can tell there is a big cavity right here and that's because I haven't installed the rebuilt Yanmar 3TMV 82A engine yet. I'm going to do that in an upcoming video. I'm going to be hooking up all the wiring. I'll be installing the coolant system and everything around the engine so we can make this start up for the first time. If you guys would like to see this John Deere 1445 running and driving for the first time, hit that subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications. That way you'll be notified once I upload that video. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. It means a lot to me and that way I can work on these projects and pump out more videos to you guys. So thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in an upcoming video. Peace. Thank you.